just a girl and she's on fire. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake, it. shake that healthy butt. Baby got ballet. Alright, hello and welcome. So, it's time to refresh on Ember. Ember really hasn't changed a lot. Uh, it's more so that just new mods have been introduced to the game. So, I have a new build for her. Uh, I still have the old build as well, and it has changed very, very slightly. Uh, and that's this, of course. This is max range, fire quake, knocking enemies down, uh, heavier CC style for Ember, and it still works very, very well. Uh, at very, very low levels, this is going to be also good for just murdering a bunch of, like, nothing enemies. If you're on Earth, this is going to kill enemies pretty much outright for, a, like, even, like, 20 minutes endless. You're going to be just fine using something like this. No problem. Uh, this uses Growing Power, which is a fantastic aura for Ember, uh, and I have not Put more form into her where I might form of that out. I actually think that growing power for the uses that I have for Ember is probably the best thing for her because um, it helps all of her abilities to a pretty significant degree. Uh, so this is Firequake and we all already know how this works. It's just going to knock all the enemies down. Uh, it's That's what it is. Uh, there were some people that I was seeing uh, that I think got fixed at some point that XMI uh, did not get knocked down by this, and like specifically Arson XMI were immune to this somehow. Uh, whoops, not Exodus Bombard. Uh, but they're not. They're definitely not immune to this at all. Bombards will spawn as XMI. Uh, they are absolutely not immune to the knockdown from this. And as far as I can tell, any enemy that can be knocked down is totally vulnerable to being knocked down by this. As you can see, they are all being pretty pretty consistently knocked down uh they're not immune at all uh so there were no like immunities that i could find uh from firequake besides the obvious ones like osprey and stuff that don't have a knockdown state so that still works as you would imagine uh and then the other build which is what i have been running more often now is this one uh, this is a more just killing focused build. Uh, it still has incredibly high range, but you're using energy conversion and growing power to get your power strength actually pretty high considering your range. You're up at 150-ish percent, uh, which is pretty powerful. Obviously, you're going to have to meet both conditions for energy conversion and growing power to get that, but that's not hard. Just bringing a weapon that has good status chance will satisfy growing power whenever you need to do like the one cast of your four, and energy conversion is just an energy orb, which are usually going to be reasonably plentiful. Uh, I've put Prime Vigor into this build because I feel like from what I've tested, Prime Vigor in practice has worked better and quick thinking for me on this build vitality is kind of equivalent to quick thinking if you've got a heal that you can bring uh but i found prime vigor to actually be the thing that i preferred on this build just running this through some like kuva floods and stuff uh to see how it dealt with the enemies and because your power strength is reasonably high on this build you've got a little over a 50 percent chance whenever you do it right um you proc fire on enemies so there is still some cc here and it can definitely still kill enemies in the level 100 range even though that's mostly going to be grunts and stuff it will still clean those guys up for you uh and make your life really really easy in something like a koopa flood so let's um put this to work uh, i'm using the axolotl primes here these are what i choose as my status weapon because if you fire these just a little tiny bit you're you're gonna get it you're gonna have um your, your status is affected and you're going to activate your own power. And then, of course, we're going to have the energy conversion from just that. Uh, but yeah, this is actually handled really easily by Ember because you're still getting a good amount of um, power strength and a decent amount of CC, and it's going to take care of a lot of these smaller enemies very easily, uh, which is awesome. And it's, it's a function that Ember became better because mods got better for her. There's a, more mods that can do more for her. Uh, and obviously, you still have access to Accelerant, which is still a really good crowd control option that lets you have CC when you need it on command, and it'll increase the damage of your four. And then obviously, there are those enemies that can't be CC'd. 
Yeah, you can see this is doing, like, good damage. Like, against these enemies, like, this is not bad. Just running around, having enemies just fucking be on fire. Uh, this is, like, good AoE damage. It's not bad at all. Like, decent CC coming off of it, just kind of normally. And then you can use your 2 as backup, because this is 100% efficiency. Or, well, rather, it is the maximum amount of efficiency, which is, uh, really good. And it just kind of works. Uh, and like I said, this works up into Kuva Flood. Obviously, you'll need to keep moving, as you might imagine. Um, and one of the other reasons that I would take a build like this to a Kuva Flood is because whenever you jump out of your Warframe, World on Fire still continues. Uh, so you're still getting the nice AoE damage from your Warframe, and your Warframe is doing something while you're jumping out doing the Kuva stuff. Um, but yeah, that's kind of Ember right now. The addition of growing power and the addition of energy conversion have really, really helped her out uh, in terms of what kinds of builds are viable for her. Thus, this build was created. Uh, if I was to put more Forma into this build, I would probably just add Firewalker up top, which is not a huge deal, but it will give you uh, more movement capabilities, which is really nice for those of you that are looking for that. Uh, and yeah. Both builds are still super viable. Uh, they definitely work. They're maybe not as effective as some other Warframes. Um, but if you want to play as Ember, these are both totally fine for most content in the game. It's just going to require a little bit more from you on the dodging and bobbing and weaving front. Uh, because obviously, very high level bombards and stuff are still going to ruin your life. Because uh, you don't have a like direct defensive option. Uh, but... Ember is in a pretty reasonable place right now. She's okay, she annihilates trash mobs, and she works in some of the places where other Warframes are not great. Uh, so, that's Ember. I'll see you guys tomorrow.